If you have been following streams and tournaments for fighting games, you would probably hear terms such as that is plus on block and the attack is negative two. And you might be wondering, what does this all mean? All of these terms are related to a universal fighting game property called frame data. In this video, I will go over what this is and how they are incorporated into fighting games. But before we dive into the details, let's first go over what a frame means in video game terms. In any type of video material, the illusion of motion is created by rapidly changing static images. For example, Eno's crouching hard slash from Guilty Gear excerpt is animated with 24 images shown in rapid succession. This gives the illusion of Eno smashing the guitar into the ground. Now in most video terminology, each one of these images is called a frame. So when a fighting game describes an attack having X amount of frames on startup, it means that X number of images are shown before the attack comes out. We use these frames as a unit of time. Hearing this, you might be confused on why we use such a convoluted way of describing time. The reason behind this is that most fighting games run on a standardized system of 60 frames per second. Describing moves in fractions or decimals of a second is quite cumbersome as it is easier to say 5 frames instead of 5 sixtieths of a second or 83.33 milliseconds. Now with that out of the way, let's look at how frame data applies to attacks in fighting games. But before we do so, it would help if you understood the concept of hit and hurtboxes. So if you would like some information on that, we do have a video, so check out the cards or details for a link. Every attack in fighting games have three phases. Startup, active, and recovery. We will use Street Fighter V Chun-Li's standing hard punch for this example. Startup is the first phase that occurs after a player does an attack input and continues until the hitbox of an attack comes out. This is the windup for an attack before it can do any damage. After the startup phase is completed, the hitbox comes out for the active phase. This is where damage to the opponent can occur. Once the damaging part of the attack is completed, the character will go into its final phase, the recovery. This is the portion where the character is following through its move and will have to wait until its end in order to do any other action. Generally, weaker attacks have faster startup and faster recovery, but does less damage, while stronger attacks do more damage but have slower startup and slower recovery. Now that we have a basic understanding of how a move operates, let's see how it interacts with opponents. When an attack hits an opponent, there are generally two outcomes. The opponent can block, or the opponent can get hit. Regardless of outcome, the opponent will not be able to do anything for a period of time. We describe this as a state of stun. To see what this means, we will use Blue Chun Li's standing light punch on a blocking opponent. You can see how the opponent is in block stun for 18 frames after blocking the attack. During this period, the opponent will not be able to do anything. The important thing here is that while the opponent takes 18 frames to recover, Blue Chun Li only takes 16 frames to finish the rest of her move. This means that she is able to recover and take actions 2 frames faster than the opponent. This is what we call frame advantage. In this case, we call Chun Li's standing light punch plus 2 on block. As a side note, some games such as Street Fighter V may add additional freeze to the attacker when a strike hits the opponent. This is why the strike recovery frames of Blue Chun Li is longer than what is shown in the raw active and recovery frame data. Now what is the significance of this number? Let's say you and your opponent both decide to do standing light punch as soon as both of you recover. Since the player who blocked recovers 2 frames slower, their standing light punch will also end up coming out 2 frames slower. So in the end, the defending pink Chun Li will lose out in this exchange.
If we were to take this example a little bit further, the blue Chun-Li can follow up with a slightly slower attack of standing medium punch instead, and still win this exchange. Why is that? Standing medium punch takes 5 frames for the hitbox to come out, whereas standing light punch only takes 4. However, since the recovery difference is 2 frames, the blue Chun-Li standing medium punch hitbox comes out 1 frame faster than pink Chun-Li standing light punch. This results in pink Chun-Li still getting counter hit. As an additional note, certain attacks can have longer recovery than the block stun. In such case, the attacker would be at a disadvantage instead of the defender. Let's see Chun-Li standing medium kick as an example. Chun-Li standing medium kick is negative 2 on block. This means that the defender will recover 2 frames faster than the attacker. If both Chun-Li decide to press standing light punch as soon as they recover, blue Chun-Li will get counter hit since pink Chun-Li recovers faster. Let's now see how frame data applies when opponents get hit. We'll take the same example of Chun-Li standing light punch. If Chun-Li standing light punch hits, the opponents will go into a state of hit stun. However, compared to the block stun, the hit stun lasts longer. In this case, you can see that the frame advantage is plus 5, which is a 3 frame increase over the block stun. And unlike block stun, hit stun allows additional hits to combo as long as the startup of the falling attack is shorter or equal to the hit stun. For example, standing medium punch has a startup of 5 frames. The hitbox of the punch will come out while the opponent is in the hit stun of standing light punch. Therefore, the game will recognize it as a 2 hit combo. However, if forward medium punch is used instead of standing medium punch, the attack will not combo. This is because the startup of forward medium punch is 7 frames, which is greater than the 5 frame advantage. Now in some games, if you hit an opponent during their attack, the opponent will go into a counter hit state. Depending on the game, this state may change the hit stun properties. In the case of Chun-Li's standing light punch, the hit stun will increase frame advantage from plus 5 to plus 7. This will allow the previous string of standing light punch to forward medium punch to combo. This is generally known as a counter hit only combo. It's very important to note that counter hit and its properties may change drastically based on game and attacking move. For example, certain moves in Street Fighter V may crumple the opponent or launch them into the air, while Street Fighter III has no counter hit state in the first place. Make sure to research and experiment for each game. With that said, this is the end of the tutorial for Frame Data Basics. There are more related topics such as meaties, frame traps, buffers, and links but it is a bit too much to cover in one video. If you did find this video helpful and want more related topics in the future, please let us know in the comments or in the polls. Be sure to check our Patreon for our latest news on video development and other additional perks. Before we end this video, we want you to know that we develop a website called SeaLeafDojo.com for finding players and events based on games and location. For example, if you are looking for events in Los Angeles, California, just type it in our search bar and find events in that area. And for organizers, we do have attendance tools that may make your life easier. We still have a small player base, so you may or may not find someone in your immediate area, but if you could register to grow the community, that would be greatly appreciated. Alright, till next time, have fun playing fighting games.